Spiritual Teaching 315 Blessed are the people who have responded to the call of their Lord. My book opens before you to reveal one lesson more. The teaching that springs from my spirit is essence and life for you. Take and eat of it because it is the bread of eternal life. I am sowing my doctrine in the hearts of these multitudes and I will reap the fruit in due time. My word will not be lost because I am keeping it in the most sensitive part of your being, which is the spirit. Calm your hunger and thirst at this table of love. Forget your misery and heal from your ailments so that you can truly enjoy these moments. The fire of pain burns your heart and only the crystalline water of my word can turn it off. That's why I invite you to hear me so that you live and regain peace. Yes, people. I want to make you possessors of my peace so that later you can spread it on the roads and towns of the earth. I have called you to prepare and become emissaries of my message of peace. Think that you are not the only ones that need me at this time, but all of humanity that surrounds you is thirsty for love and light. Do not fear if you are not understood. My light illuminates all understanding. Do not look at the difference of languages or creeds, insurmountable obstacles to the propagation of my doctrine. The Tower of Babel is still standing certainly, but it is also true that the spiritualist people are already emerging in the world and he is on a mission to begin to destroy the foundations of that tower of division, differences, and pride. I want you to learn to have peace in the midst of the struggle so that you all continue to consider this world as one abode like a home that, although fleeting, has the warmth and substance that everyone needs to live. Do not yet think that the peace that spiritual life can bring you when you have left it. Think how much you still have to do in this world. Rather, be concerned with doing the highest merits to be worthy of a better dwelling and if you think about this, do not doubt that you will know how to make good use of the days that my charity grants you on earth. Leave in your passage through life a trace of love, because if that is not the case, you will not be able to reach the kingdom of peace. If you love me, if you believe in me, if you want to please me and carve out a future of peace in your spirit, take this teaching, practice it with purity and truth, and when that is, you will experience in all your being a strength and a very great light because you will be imitating me. When your struggle ceases, you will be able to hear in your heart an infinite heavenly voice that will say to you, Bless you who heard my voice in the desert and believed in it, because from that moment you had a perfect ideal that inspires you. Blessed are those who knew how to resist slander, beatings, and humiliations, because at last you have conquered the earth where you will heal all your wounds. Store my word, O oh blessed people. See that it will have to be the firm foundation of a new tower that men shall build, but not the tower that symbolizes human pride, nor the one that defiles divine power and justice, but the immaterial tower which symbolizes spiritual 
elevation, love, charity, and harmony among men. To help you in your spiritual development, it was essential that I communicate through understanding with this people, to remind you of my law, to clarify my word, and define your mission. Law, rules, and advice I have entrusted to you so that you know how to guide yourselves once you no longer have my word with you. That law and those rules made known to humanity through human understanding will serve so that men to whom I have granted spiritual gifts know how to guide them through the true path, thus avoiding your own confusion and that of your brothers. I tell you again that your spiritual journey will not be difficult. If you all know how to unite the different gifts and missions that I have entrusted you, you will form a group that will be invincible in trials because all of you will lend strength and encourage each other in the fight to reach the promised land. The world in this age did not know how to wait for me as the people of Israel waited for me in that second era. My great prophets had announced a Messiah, a Savior, the Son of God, who would come to deliver the oppressed and to enlighten the world with the light of the word, and that people, the more they suffered, the more they desired the arrival of the promised one. The more he drank from the cup of humiliation and oppression, the more he longed for the presence of the Messiah. And everywhere he looked for signs and signs that spoke to him on the proximity of the arrival of his Savior. From generation to generation, from father to son, the divine promise that made him watch and pray for a long time past my chosen people. At last I arrived among my people, but not everyone knew how to recognize me, although everyone was waiting for me. Some did it with spirituality and others through a materialistic interpretation. But the clarity and love that they felt my presence and looked at the kingdom of heaven in the light of my word so that they would believe in my manifestation. It was enough for me with those who followed me faithfully and looked in me to their spiritual savior because they were the ones who gave testimony of my truth after I left this world. Although my message was for all the peoples of the earth, I called on the heart of the chosen people so that they then become the spokesperson for my word. However, not only that people felt my presence, but also in other nations, men knew how to discover the signs of my arrival and sensed the time of my presence on earth. When I declared to the world to be the Messiah, and my word as a river of life began to sustain hearts, the hunger and misery of body and spirit were everywhere. Only the light of hope sustained those people, for even his worship of God has suffered desecration, making it another idolatrous worship. Hunger, thirst, disease, slavery, confusion, leprosy, darkness, misery. That was the burden that Caesar had placed on the men of God's people. That is why it was desired, why day after day it was expected. And when my word reached the hearts, speaking to them of love, justice, fraternity, and freedom, the mobs followed me. When my hand touched the sick, making them feel peace and divine consolation, they, unable to contain themselves, cried out to give testimony in streets and squares that I was the promised Christ, the announced 
Messiah. And now in this third era, what people has waited for me? Who has watched and prayed for the fulfillment of my promise? Very few. Because instead of imitating that people that from generation to generation was transmitting the knowledge of the prophecies, what you have done is to erase my word from time to time. And know that in my word, given in the Messiah in the second era, I promise to return, thus confirming the word of the prophets of the first era, which not only spoke of my coming as man, but also announced my coming in spirit, in this time that you now live. The signs that will speak of my next arrival, as well as the evidence of my presence among men, were written, and all have been fulfilled. Why then did the world not know how to wait for me? Humanity drains the most bitter cup of all that man has drunk in the world. Why then has he not wanted or called me? Because his materialism has reached such a degree that he has excluded me from his life. They have thrown me from their hearts because they are no longer the humble, those who knew how to bow down before the Lord to pray and obey His will. Now man feels great, wise, strong, powerful, and absolute. He possesses the light of science. Why should he wish for the light of the Spirit? He is the owner of the forces of nature. Why wait for me to come to free him from his enemies if he can do it with his own weapons? Humanity was spiritually asleep the moment my promise to return among you was fulfilled. Not a single people watched or waited for me and looked that if in the first era the promise of the Messiah was for a people, the promise of my return was for all nations. Truly I tell you that my light, like lightning, has crossed from the east towards the west without the world being aware of it. My word has reached among you, awakening and surprising men who are rude of understanding, ignorant of the reason for my call, to serve me with your mind and transmit my new message to the world. When this message was concluded, I will stop speaking through these channels to later manifest myself in a subtle way in the spirits, but my word engraved in the hearts of those who heard it and written in a new book will be carried to the peoples and nations of the world as a seed of peace, as the light of true science, as a bomb on evil that afflicts the body and spirit of humanity. My word will not reach hearts when my emissaries desire it, but when it is my will, because I will be he who watches over my seed, who prepares the land for him and makes a way for him, I will be the one who makes it arrive wisely in the opportune moment to peoples, nations, and homes. She will arrive when they are already waiting for her, when hearts awaken, remembering my promises, when they have awakened from their deep sleep of greatness, of pride, of materialism, and vanity. People who have gathered around the manifestation of my word, since you did not know how to watch while waiting for my arrival, at least understand the value of my work. Looking in at the infinite love with which I have come to you to tell you, since you have not known how to await my return, know how to stay awake from now on watching and praying for the salvation of the world. 
I have sought you to make each one of you a disciple of mine, to leave you as an inheritance my word, which is an eternal seed. And after sowing and cultivating my own seed in you, sending you to other lands, representing mine, to bring this present of love to all your brothers. I am hungry for the faith and spirituality of my children. I have given you the spirit that is part of mine, which makes you superior to the other creatures that populate this world. Man is a light to me for the attributes and virtues that I have endowed you with. I have given you everything so that you may live a lavish life in works of love and charity. Do not hide my doctrine for fear of being rejected. If you prepare yourselves worthily, if you stick to compliance of my laws, who can censor you? My teachings lead you to the highest moral and spirituality, and you can live in peace with those who profess their faith in different ways, such as those who belong to other races or to other classes. I only want you to bear the seal of the purest spirituality so that you are recognized as disciples of this work. For this reason, do not feel bigger or smaller than your brothers, but yes, feel the duty to help them, putting my word within their reach so that they can also become my disciples. I have given you the earth so that you may all possess it equally, so that you may live in peace and take it as a temporary home in which you will develop your gifts and prepare your spirit to ascend to its new dwelling. I have told you, in the house of the Lord there are many mansions. You will know them as you go rising. Each one in an ascending degree will bring you closer to me and will be reached by you according to your works because everything is subject to a divine order and justice. No one will be able to prevent your passage from one stop over to another and at the end of each one of them there will be rejoicing and celebration in your spirit and in mine too. This is how I prepare you so that you know that the road you have to travel is long and that you do not settle for your first works, believing that they will open the door of those dwellings for you. And I also tell you that it is beautiful and satisfying for a spirit to reach the end of a stage and stop to look back at the path traveled with its great struggles, its days of bitterness, and its hours of peace, after having overcome the innumerable obstacles, and at last triumph, compensation, and justice shining around you, and the spirit of your present glorious Father blessing the Son, making him rest in his bosom while he is prepared for his next stopover and thus passing from one to another until reaching the highest fulfillment at the end to dwell eternally in you. For now, fulfill your destiny on earth. Bring peace where there is war, love where there is hatred, and pour out charity where selfishness reigns. And when you come to the end of this path, I will repay you more than you have given to your brothers. This is my simple and clear word. Within the reach of your understanding, I have recreated with your recollection and attention. I see in each one of you the desire to practice my teaching, to renew yourselves, to perfect yourselves, 
and to come to form a healthy family of spirit and matter that is loved and recognized and is founded on one spirit who sends light, strength, and peace to humanity. The light of my divinity is in all consciousness. As the supreme gift with which I have inherited my children, you are, therefore, among all my creatures the highest, since you carry within yourself the light of consciousness that makes you know who you are, where you come from, what your destiny is, and where you are going. Now your spirit lives in a time of greater light, in which it will have to take a step forward, in which it will rise more towards me, who am the goal of your perfection and spirituality. The scale that Jacob saw in his dreams today rises luminous in front of each spirit, inviting him to ascend and to know the mysteries that men have not been able to penetrate. This is a time of clarity for the spirit and for human understanding in which you will know how to find the content, essence, or meaning of all those revelations that from past time were made to you, but that you have not managed to interpret fairly because they were given to you through symbolic language or in a parable. The lack of spirituality of men has been the cause that the understanding has not clarified the truth found within each of the words or forms contained in the divine messages. So humanity has supposed that it should only believe even when it is without understanding. I tell you, in this instant, I am not a mystery to anyone, that you create the mystery with your lack of spiritual elevation, with your lack of prayer and your lack of charity and humility. I cannot be a mystery because I am everywhere and I show myself fully in everything that exists and surrounds you. But if you insist on not looking at me, if you close your eyes when I appear before them or you flee from me when I am calling you, I will have to continue being an impenetrable mystery to you. Do you know the meaning of that scale that in dreams Jacob did contemplate. This scale represents the life and evolution of spirits. Jacob's body was sleeping at the time of the revelation, but his spirit was awake. He had raised to the Father seeking prayer as a means, and as his spirit penetrated the regions of light, he reached to receive a heavenly message that would remain as a testament of revelations and spiritual truths for your people, which is all humanity, because Israel is not a material name, but a spiritual one. Jacob saw that this ladder was resting on the earth and that its top touched heaven. This indicates the path of spiritual elevation that begins on earth through the flesh and ends by melting its light and its essence with that of his father out of all material influence. The patriarch saw angels ascending and descending on that scale, representing it the end Sestant, incarnate, and disincarnate, the continuous coming and going of the spirits in pursuit of light, or also on a mission to restore and purify oneself, to rise a little higher when returning to the spiritual world. It is the path of spiritual evolution that leads to perfection. That is why Jacob contemplated at the top of the scale the representative form of Jehovah, 
indicating that God is the goal of your perfection, of your aspirations, and the supreme reward of infinite joy as a compensation of arduous struggles to the prolonged sufferings and perseverance to reach the bosom of the Father. In vicissitudes and trials, the Spirit always found the opportunity to earn merit to advance. There, in every trial, it has always been represented the ladder of Jacob, inviting you to climb one more rung. That was a great revelation of disciples, because in it you were told about the spiritual life at a time in which the awakening of the spirit towards the worship of the divine, the elevated, the pure, good, and true. That message could not be only for a family, not even for a single people. Its essence was spiritual, and therefore it had universality. That is why my father's voice said to Jacob, I am Jehovah, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land in which you are, I will give it to you and your seed, and that seed will be like the dust of the world, and you will spread to the west and the east and the north and the south, and all the families of the earth will be blessed in you and your seed. This message may seem of little importance in appearance, but it is profoundly infinite in its spiritual content. But how could men find their essence if they have not valued it, if they flee from any spiritual sign of revelation? I had to be the one who came to give you the interpretation of that message that I gave you in another time, when the awakening of the Spirit in the world was just beginning, to encourage you on your mission. Day after day, signs appear and events arise that tell you about the end of an era. Human science has reached a limit to which man can carry it in his materialism because science, inspired by the spiritual ideal of love, good, and self-improvement, it can go far beyond the level you have now reached. The proof that your scientific advance has not been motivated by the love for one another is the moral degeneration of people. It is the fratricidal war. It is the hunger and misery that reigns everywhere. It is the ignorance of the spiritual. Full of pride, the great nations rise up proclaiming their might, threatening the world with their weapons, flaunting intelligence and science, not realizing how fragile the false world they have created since a weak touch of my justice will suffice for that artificial world to disappear. It will be the hand of man that destroys his own work. It will be his mind that invents the way to exterminate all that you created before. I will make only those human works that have given good fruit to men so that they continue to be cultivated for the good of future generations. But everything that has evil or selfish ends will be destroyed in the fire of my inexorable justice. On the ruins of a world created and destroyed by a materialistic humanity, a new world whose foundation will be experienced and will aim at the ideal of a spiritual elevation. Think of the advancement of a humanity whose morality comes from spirituality. Imagine a humanity without limits or borders, fraternally sharing all the means of life that the earth offers to its children. 
try to imagine what human science will be when it has as its ideal the love of one another, when man obtains the knowledge he seeks through prayer. Think how pleasant it will be for me to receive from men the worship of love, faith, obedience, and humility through their lives without having to resort to rites or external worship. That will be the life for man because within it they will breathe peace, enjoy freedom, and sustain themselves only with that which contains truth. The existence that you lead on earth has more of death than of life. She is hell for many. It is prison. It is captivity. It is exile. Peace is not known in it, nor can it enjoy the freedom. There is no health in the body or in the spirit, nor are there joys that compensate you in something of so much pain. But you struggle to appear happy. You meditate on how to hide your continuous failures. You put before your face a smiling mask to pretend that you are happy, and you show off your strength and courage to hide the fear that you have before the abyss that you have opened under your feet. Yesterday the earth was a valley of tears. Now it is the valley of blood. Tomorrow what will it be? A field of smoky rubble where I pass the fire of justice, exterminating sin and lowering the pride of men without love because they forgot the spirit. Thus will the merchants of science be cast out of the temple of knowledge, because they profited from light, because they desecrated the truth. What future times am I talking about? You do not know, nor am I going to specify them, because the facts will be speaking of the fulfillment of my word. While I say to some, Gather all the fruit of your works so that the fire may destroy them. To others I say that they gather their seed and protect it, so that when the day of the justice passes, that seed will follow, spreading like the seed of life. In my teaching for this day, I want to tell you that my word has once again enlightened this humanity so that it wake up and rise to spirituality. The concept that men have of me is very limited. Its knowledge about the spiritual very scarce. His faith very small. Religions sleep the dream of centuries without taking a step forward and when they wake up it is only to stir inside without daring to break the fence that has been created with their traditions. It will be the humble, the poor, the simple, and the ignored who leave that orbit in search of light, of pure environment, truth, and progress. They will be the ones who give the bell and the alert voice when they feel the arrival of the times of my new revelations in the age of spirituality. Humanity wants to discover the mystery of spiritual life, of that existence that inevitably he will have to penetrate, and that is why he is interested in knowing. Men question, plead, ask for light out of charity because they feel the need to prepare but for every answer is told that spiritual light is a mystery and that they try to lift the veil that covers them, it is reckless and blasphemous. Truly I tell you, those thirsty for truth and light will not find in the world the source whose waters quench your thirst. I will be the one to pour from heaven those waters of wisdom that spirits long to drink. I will overflow my source of truth on every spirit 
and on every mind, so that the mysteries remain destroyed. Because I tell you once again, that it is not I who has mysteries for men, but you who create them. It is well that there will always be something in your father that you will never discover. If you take into account that God is infinite and that you are only particles, but that you must ignore who you are in eternity, that you have to be an impenetrable mystery before yourselves and that you have to wait to penetrate into life spiritual to know it. That is not prescribed by me. That in times past you were not spoken to in this way, nor were you made a broad invitation to enter the light of spiritual knowledge. It is true, but it is that in the times past, humanity did not experience the overwhelming need to know that she now feels, nor was she spiritually or mentally capable of understanding. If she had always been searching and probing, it was more out of curiosity than a true thirst or light. For men to find the path that leads them towards that light and for them to be in good condition to receive those waters from the source of life and wisdom, first they will have to leave all exterior worship and erase all fanaticism from your heart. Once you begin to feel in your heart the presence of the living and almighty God, you will feel escape from the most intimate of her being a new prayer, unknown, full of feeling and sincerity, full of elevation and of tenderness, which will be the true prayer revealed by spirit. That will be the beginning of your elevation towards the light, the first step on the path of spirituality. If the spirit can reveal true prayer to man, it can also reveal all the gifts he possesses, as well as the way to develop them and guide them along the path of love. You still live in a time when you need the books that contain the testimony of my manifestation to learn in them or that your brother who no more transmit their knowledge to you but you do not count on approaches the time of the intuitive of those who speak by inspiration of those who receive light in prayer of those who without learning on earth have more power than the man of science my communication and that of my spiritual world through these poor, ignorant, and rude people is a proof of what I tell you. The beginning of an age that will culminate with the manifestation of spirit to spirit. Towards that goal, humanity will soon be heading without obstacles that could stop it from achieving all of your highest spiritual aspirations. Every man has the sacred right to know the truth and no one must oppose his passage since it is I who at the end of the road is waiting for him. Hug him with infinite love and show him all the beauty that eternity holds for each one of those who seek with love. For all those who who really hunger and thirst. My peace be with you.